they said 60 days for this to take effect, correct? But none of this happens without a judge's approval. That's correct. This whole thing is based on what's called the Flores Settlement Agreement. It's a landmark uh, case that governs uh, the entire country's housing and welfare for unaccompanied migrant children and also for families that are apprehended, migrant families that are apprehended with children. And the settlement is, is under court order. So before you can do anything to change it, the judge who oversees that settlement has to approve it. And one of the things that she's going to look for is, does this new rule actually meet the standards, the very labyrinthine standards of the original agreement from 22 years ago. So Camilla, we heard a lot of talk about um, families, but right. not very much about unaccompanied minors. What is the plan for unaccompanied minors? Right, so, you know, as Graham mentioned, this agreement, which has been in place for over two decades now, has really governed the way the government is supposed to care for children in its custody. It was first just for unaccompanied migrant children, Anne Marie, but then a, a judge in 2015 expanded that to children who came to the border uh, with parents or other legal guardians, so families with children. So this will impact both populations, unaccompanied migrant children and children within family units, right? Uh, it will give the government more leeway to detain uh, migrant children which are detained by ICE uh, for more than 20 days. That is the limit that a judge effectively said uh, during a more recent uh, court ruling uh, surrounding the Flores litigation. Uh, so advocates fear, right, that this will lead inevitably to indefinite detention of migrant families until their uh, court proceedings are finished. But a DHS official told us that this is not the purpose uh, of the uh, regulation. The, uh, the purpose of the regulation, as they believe, is to close some loopholes and curtail the incentive that they believe migrant families have to come to the U.S. If you come here with the child, you will be released uh, an, after a couple of days because of this Flores agreement. So that is the main sticking point between the government and uh, immigrant advocates. Graham, CBS News spoke to one of the attorneys representing some of these unaccompanied children in the Flores case. What, what is their next action in this? They're definitely going to pursue litigation in this, but they know that this can't move forward at all without it going to the court. And in fact, uh, the DHS secretary said as much. The whole point of the agreement is every single change has to be approved by a court. Mm -hmm. So while they're saying this is going to be implemented in 60 days, uh, we all know how it works with litigation. There's a really good chance that uh, this is going to go on for, for some time. We, we could see, uh, no matter what the decision is from the first judge, we're going to see it appeal to the Ninth Circuit. So we're still a long way away from, from seeing this implemented, in particular because they're trying to set up an entirely new regulatory regime across the country. So, Chip, you know, the Trump administration has received a healthy amount of criticism about the way particularly unaccompanied minors have been uh, treated and housed. Um, the focus of this announcement seemed to be mostly families and sort of the the not not luxury digs, but the yeah. better We're quality make it nicer digs. For them there. Yeah, that families would be staying in. But you got to wonder about the timing. What is the administration saying about why they're unveiling this sweeping new plan now? Uh, is that addressed to me? I think yes, you Chip, said that's my name for you. There. Yeah. Yes, okay, just wanted to make sure. Yeah, well, um, it, it, this is something they've been working on for quite some time. Uh, in fact, there have been people considered for jobs in this administration who the president didn't think moved quickly enough on this issue, whose names were withdrawn from consideration. This is something he believes, and uh, the secretary apparently believes, will help eliminate that whole catch and release idea uh, that uh, families come here, and because of this 20 day limit, they're put back in, the, in society, uh, and then in some cases disappear uh, and uh, blend into American society. A, a lot of people would say that's great. They do well. They get jobs. But the Trump administration obviously does not want that to happen. Uh, and they believe that that will help uh, eliminate this. But uh, the reason it's happening now, they simply say, is because this crush of people coming across the border illegally is just unsustainable at this point. Uh, but on the issue of timing, and I don't know if you discussed this already, you probably did, this could be a long 
long haul if this ever mm -hmm. actually does uh, take effect. It's not supposed to take effect for another 60 days. Uh, they are well aware it's going to be uh, subject to numerous lawsuits. Uh, it's, there's no uh, guarantee that they're going to win these lawsuits. Uh, and even if they eventually do, it could take months or even years, as we've seen with so many other Trump administration proposals on immigration. Chip, everything this election year is informed by politics. So do you think part of this is to at least look like you're moving, you're trying to move past these bad optics of the kids in cages and say, look, we're trying to do something here. We can't help it if the court doesn't agree with it, but we're trying to put them in a much nicer living conditions here. Yeah, absolutely. There is a lot of politics involved in this. They do want to get away from the idea that they are heartless in just putting kids in cages, and and uh, they want to they want to change the the uh, the message here. They want to say we're treating them very well. We're keeping families together. We're giving them three hot meals a day and soccer fields and uh, everything else they could possibly want. Family suites. Uh, the question I asked. I've talked to a couple of immigration advocates who have said they think that the issue. Of of, st of ending the 20-day rule may get lost in, in all the information here, and that what many families will hear is simply, wow, we're going to be treated beautifully. This is the time to go. Uh, so there is a possibility that this will have the reverse effect of what the secretary hopes it will do. Yeah, that's what I sort of wondered uh, about. And the other thing that we learned mm -hmm. is that in terms of catch and release, that's actually taking place now as yeah. well. That's sort of not the message that the Trump administration wants to deliver right. to uh, its supporters. But what we are hearing is we're going to spend a lot more money. And also, by the way, there are uh, thousands of families who are not being detained, who yeah. are sort of giving given bracelets or whatever and being asked to, you know, turn back up but again. It, notably, the right time. McLean didn't mention the 20 day. He kept talking about the 50 day. 50 <laughs> days is the goal. 50 day was the ideal years ago during the Obama administration. And we're going to try to get back to that. Yeah. And that kind of I think Chip's right. That kind of slipped in there quietly with all the we have, you know, three beds and a jacuzzi kind mm -hmm. of talk that they have. There, so. <laughs> right. All right. I was facetious. There. I <laughs> Um, so uh, I guess exaggeration, but yes, uh, a little bit. Uh, part of my, part of what I wanted to ask you about is exactly how is the system working now? Because catch and release, that phrase was something that the Trump administration criticized the Obama administration for, but clearly that's part of their solution as well. Yes, yeah, so right now we only have about 3,000 beds across the country for members of families that are apprehended. And as they've noted, there are way more that get apprehended. Right. And they're typically released either with uh, ankle monitors or just appointments to attend their next court date. And the vast majority do, in fact, do that. Oh, okay. All right. Well, there was one in, there was one stat that we talked about during this press conference that I think is worth mentioning again. Uh, he gave out the number of 475,000 family units apprehended, and then he was talking about how they do DNA tests to try to see is it fraudulent? Are these real family members, or are they trying to slip? And he said we've caught 6,000 family units that had fraudulent DNA. You made the point. Well, there are family members who don't necessarily share the same DNA. Right. Uh, but I find that number minuscule, 6,000, compared to 475,000 family units. Yeah. Camilla, what do, you, what do you think about that? Right, it is very minuscule. And, and picking up on what you and, and Anne-Marie were talking about is whether this is going to have the deterrence effect that the administration hopes for. Because as we know, uh, when they implemented the th zero tolerance policy to separate migrant children from their parents or legal guardians near the border l last summer, the, the numbers continued to uh, skyrocket, uh, and they hit a record high for migrant families this May of this year. So the family separation policy, even though it was rescinded after a couple of months, did not work as a deterrence policy. Uh, and as Chip mentioned, there's no telling whether this one will work uh, as well. Well, we know there's going to be a lot of legal wrangling before yeah. we see any, any changes at all. Chip, Graham, Camillo, thank you so much.